So I took all that technical analysis. I went there. I showed them, look, I'm ready to learn. So they took that and they're like, okay, this is what you know. Let's took that, throw it in that garbage and let's start fresh. <laughs> let's start all the way from brand new. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Be the trader. Today is going to be a fun day because I brought in Prad, aka Trader TV. Prad, if you don't know who he is, then you need to look him up. Just Google him or YouTube him, right? He's on TV, on YouTube TV every single day trading. And I wanted to know his story. I wanted to learn a little bit more about Prad. So, Prad, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you for having me, man. I watch a lot of your interviews and uh, I've, I've learned a lot from those interviews. So I'm excited to finally be up here. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see uh, what, what what you got for me. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. So so let's get started with, you know, what got you even interested in trading to begin with? Was this something that was kind of like a bug of yours as a kid or where did this come from? Uh, back when I was a kid, back in India, I have memories of my grandpa and I walking to and back then, uh, it wasn't like computers where you would be able to trade by yourself and press keyboards on your whatever keys. We actually had to walk to a broker, sit down, and my grandpa would tell the broker, do this, do that. That was my first introduction to the market. Uh, somewhere down the road and then high school, we had like this little business program course thing mm -hmm. in our in our business class. I, I did like the best in that one. And then after that, it just died off. I had no real interest into it. They didn't really peek into it somewhere down the road uh job after job and uh, changing one career path after another i was like okay we did this before my dad does this right now my dad's a stock trader so why don't i try going into that business too started off with an options account guess what everyone does not normally blew it up so i was like okay no this is exciting i need to learn more and uh, applied for a prop firm. And then uh, next thing you know, I'm now hosting a show, talking to people about trading. That's amazing. So so yeah. let's slow things down though, because you said that you your dad is also an active trader. It sounded like at first, at the beginning, it sounded like he was just kind of like interested in it. So he trades regularly. Does he trade the US market? Well, not, not as much as he used to anymore. But back in the day, I remember when my grandpa eventually uh, you know, passed on his knowledge or his experience on to my dad. And my dad would eventually leave his uh, day job, which would be banking and back home in India, trade the Indian market. And that would be most of our uh, finances. And my mom would be working as a teacher too. So that would be like a, you know, collected pool. And, and eventually we would come to Canada and yeah, he would be trading the U S markets. And this man would be up at night trading the Indian markets too. Right. So all of this talking about it now, it's like, wow, it's almost like it's my blood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's really cool. And I'm very curious though, you know, is there anything that you kind of maybe weren't really like, it wasn't like in teaching mode, like here's what you got to do, but it was more like absorbing information. Did any of that information come to light nowadays? Like, oh, I remember my dad saying this. Oh, I remember this. Like anything like that come to light? Yeah, for the most part, you know, my dad wasn't like a technical trader or like uh, he would just be like, I like this company. I like what they do. I'll buy. He had more of that Warren Buffett mentality. Yep. So I, that, I would pick up on that a lot more. Uh, so that's what that's what I apply for my investing side of like, OK, I don't really like Apple personally, but I like their products and the and the hype that they bring in behind it so i'll buy apple as a shareholder i'll buy even google shares <clears> because i use google 24 7 so things like that learning about the company's values those come from my grandpa and my dad like my grandpa used to talk about indian companies all the time when i was a kid so uh yeah i think just learning more about how what a company does and and uh their value to people behind it that's where that's what they've taught me for the most part I want to take this time to say thank you to our sponsor, Cobra Trading. Cobra Trading is the go-to broker for day traders and short sellers. And I'm not the only one saying this. In fact, Benzinga awarded Cobra Trading as the go-to broker for short selling. They have a heavy focus on direct market access order routing, so you have the fastest execution. They have some of the best locate prices and availability. They also have amazing customer service. I've experienced many different brokers and it's why I use them every single day and why I'm proud to have them as our sponsor. Sign up now by clicking the Be The Trader referral link below and earn one free month of software with Cobra and 
25% off all commissions. Now let's get back to the show. And then you took a break after you, you, know, you went to school, learned a little bit more about training, got some interest. Then you kind of took a break for it, went to regular jobs. And then you went to trade, you know, apply for a prop firm. How was that like? And, and did you kind of trade a little bit on your own before applying? Or did you just go right in and apply? That was a, a very lucky opportunity, honestly. So like I said, I, I did the options trading. Uh, I got let go from a job. So I did, I took whatever cash I made from that job. I did options trading, blew up that small account. Then uh, I learned about what prop trading was. So I Googled prop firms near, near my place. I, I luck, luckily enough found a place I was hiring, applied, yep. did the interview, everything worked out. So that was that was the luckiest thing. And honestly, I don't think if if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be trading because I, I can see how hard it is right now. And, and especially in these markets, too, people can wipe out accounts so quickly. And for them to get back up there, it's going to be so hard. So very fortunate in, in uh, even having that job posting at that moment. What, what year was this when you applied? 20, 2019, November. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then... And then so you get hired. Yeah. And, and what was that like? I mean, you, you go in there and you start learning right away. Like, how does that process work? If you remember. Overwhelming, really overwhelming because you're, you're coming in. Well, like, obviously, when you're sitting at home after letting go, after being let go recently, you're reading books after books on technical analysis. You're watching right. videos, tasty learning or whatever websites, uh, investing.com and all that. So I took all that technical analysis. I went there, I showed them, look, I'm ready to learn. So they took that and they're like, okay, this is what you know. Let's took that, throw it in that garbage and let's start fresh. <laughs> let's start all the way from brand new. And uh, that's what the overwhelming part was because no one really teaches you how to read, read the tape in, in a mm. book and, and uh, all the, all the other psychology parts too. Yeah. You have amazing books and uh, Dr. Steenbarger on YouTube, amazing clips from him. Uh, for psychology but at the end of the day being around that community being around professional traders watching them handle a loss watching them come out of a hole watching them handle big wins and just hold their breath and not even have any any excitement about it like I'm not mm. even there yet that's where I want to be right and watching these guys like hit this banger trades and just pack their bag, walk home while I had like a barely minimum trade compared to them. I'm like, Oh, let's go. Right. So uh, just learning things from around these people that have been overwhelming. And I don't think uh, if you're not in that society or in that group of people, I don't like your growth is so hindered because of that. Mm. So having people mm. like you do these interviews and having the people trading at home, giving them a community is a great thing. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. It's very interesting. They kind of like said, okay, I, I see what you learned here. Let's just throw that away and start over, which oh, is cool yeah. because they, they kind of went you through the same process that they take everyone through. Was it difficult for you to kind of find what worked for you or, or like, tell me about that journey. Like once they start to teach you, like, was it really quick for you? Like, give us a little story about that. Well, it was very right time, right place, right? So I got, I, I applied in November, 2019. Right, right before. Uh, we, have yeah. this, we have this training program called, we have to make $2,000 in one month to graduate. Okay. And and eventually that program morphed into, now you just have to make $2,000 in over whatever time period that you can. And, and uh, anyway, that's a different part. So yeah. I got because I graduated and then all of a sudden COVID-19 started coming in. So all of my trades were just like exponential, like on the short side, you you shorted anything on the day, the market would open into a halt and it was just crazy. So I got very lucky at that moment. So I think my growth honestly got exponentialized because of that. But for, for the most part, people coming in, um, you know, you got to be ready to go through the ringer. You got to be ready to take setups that you've never learned before. There's some office setups over there uh, that we teach people all the time. Uh, the, the the growth process, though, is, is really based on person to person. And you know that everyone's different at the end of the day. I've seen people join at the same time as me and not yeah. do the things that I've done. And then people leave after, right? So it's it's right time, right place. And I took advantage of it. Absolutely. What was one of the, you, you mentioned a couple of things, like you could see people 
around you who would just like kill it and just kind of shake it like it was no big thing. Yeah. Did you you're able to sit with them and talk to them? Like, did you ask some questions? And like, you know, why are you not celebrating? You know, why are you like, did you ever ask them that? Uh, I have not had the opportunity to ask that person specifically, but uh, eventually I do plan to talk to that person more. You know, I, I let that person be alone to himself. It's he's kind of like up here in my yeah. books and I got to work up to him. But uh, no, I've talked to other people and I'm like, so what is the story? And they're like, well, he's had some real bad days and he's had some really big days. So now it's just neutralized. So now it's just the process. It's no longer the whatever is happening. It's how good is a trade and and uh, really going into that robot psychology of uh, nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. I'm in here to make a good trade and I don't have to diddle in the middle. I have to sit there and just wait for my levels. And once my level comes into play, I hit it. And the, and the outcome is the outcome. So let's talk about that too. Because when, when when you mention your levels, so you're a technical based trader, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. And it sounds like you're more short bias. Am I, am I correct there? For the most part, yeah. Okay. So so when it comes to technical based trading on your style, do you, do you, you sound like you said, you know, you wait for it to get to your levels and do you just play it right away or are you waiting for something like at those levels? Uh, the right answer here would obviously be, you know, you want to wait for the backside of the of the tape over there. You want to wait for like, let's say, for example, today, um, Bed Bath and Beyond, the, that stock was squeezing through the roof and just going almost broke 28. I took the 25 break. I took the 26 break. I took the 27 break and I was instantly just scalping in, out, in, out, in, out. Didn't want to hold the stock for too long. Uh, and then I was watching the 28 break. So I would kind of say the 28 break would be the backside because it broke it, gave you a 60 cent top after that, and didn't really give you any more trading higher than that. So if you got short anywhere close to 28, risk that 60 cents and, and just hold it for the short at the end of the day when the rugs got pulled, it dropped like what, $3, $2 right away. The 18. So things like that would be the right answer. Yeah, 18. Wow. Yeah, so things like that would be the right answer, obviously. But uh, I I still have to work towards that. I know what to do. Mm -hmm. I I still have to work my patience and uh, and uh, I have to work my patience at the end of the day. I know that at the end of the day for that. So you know what you're good at. Yeah, and and so you're working on some of your weaknesses. Is that what you're That's saying? Right. And and, yeah. and is it the is it mainly patience? And when you say patience, do you mean like patience for the sign to get in or patience for like just waiting for a setup? Like what do you mean? Yeah, patience for the setup, patience for the actual level to come into play. Like sometimes I'll 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 see a random little blip on the tape around my level. Right. And I'll start taking a position over there, but I should have just waited for my level. I should have just stuck around there, waited for an actual read around my level and things like that, things that upset me. So mm -hmm. I, I would blame that more on my patients. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. How, how's it, how's it, when it comes to like finding what worked for you, was that very quick for you? Because it, it sounds like when you're explaining things, you said you hit the place, hit it at the right time. And you know, November of 2019, right before 2020, and then things kind of just went for you. And it sounds like from my perspective, it kind of happened in a couple of months. So, you know, did you easily, like, was it just a natural reaction for you to be like, okay, like I get technicals. I know how to, I, I understand the short side. Or did you try other things as well? Why, or did you just straight go to shorting? Like, did you try other things and then kind of found out what worked for you? Can you explain that? Uh, no, I, you got to try all things at once because uh, you can't just rely on one thing. And it's uh, the way I explain it for the most part is you're, if you're gardening and, and you got to, you know, pluck weeds, you're going to use a weed plucker or whatever you call it. And then you got to use a rake to rake the, the extra leaves. So you got to use the right tool for the right job. So we have different setups at the floor that we teach people. Um, uh, we use different setups at different times of days. So obviously when I'm trying to short, I, I wait for the I wait for some stocks that don't have the strength in them so mm -hmm. I can short them later for a mean reversion back to VWAP and, and I call a day at the VWAP uh, re reversion. Uh, but but obviously what I'm trying to get better is the low floats and obviously these squeeze stock shorts, you catch these shorts, you, you are absolutely laughing at the end of the day. But in regards to your question as to how did I know 
what I need to get better at. That's just journaling. You know, I I made this Excel sheet, worked hours and hours on this Excel sheet just to track my uh, every single data. I tag my setups. It, it tells me exactly how much I trade by volume, by time and everything. Uh, every single little reports some completely separate. So I look at them bi-weekly just to understand where I'm losing, where I'm making money, where can I put more risk and where can I take a risk off of? Mm. And that's what helps me understand that. On your Excel spreadsheet, because I know people are going to be listening to this and be like, well, like, are you jotting down every trade you do right when you take it on the Excel spreadsheet? Or are you like waiting to the end of the day to put everything in? Like, how does your process when it comes to journaling? Yeah, I just download the sheet from our uh, from our main website that we have uh, or or whatever platform you can download it from, right? And then uh, download it, plug it into my Excel sheet. Then I just tag each uh, trade based on whatever ticker. For the most part, I know what type of setup I played on what ticker and at what time. It's sometimes I play maybe two different setups on, on the same ticker. So mm -hmm. I just filter it for the time, filter it for the ticker and just tag it for the setup. So it's I have this little system going on. But for the most part, uh, I think people will find that a little hard. Uh, there's websites and the in store, uh, what's it called? The uh, applications out there that can track it for you. I would suggest people using those applications. I don't want to say any out there j just because I don't want to like be affiliated. Sure. To any yeah, of them. yeah. So, uh, yeah, if there's, if there's any that you, you want to suggest, yeah, go for it. Yeah. yeah. If any that you want to suggest. So I would always tell people to go use those journaling softwares. Absolutely. And and there's so so many journaling softwares out there. Just one of them. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't, but I use them as TraderView. It's really easy to use. Oh, yeah, yeah. Simple, right? It's easy to use. You can categorize it as well. You can filter and all of that. So it's real simple. And the reason I asked you that question is because I have found for me sometimes like I've I've like mixed. Like sometimes like whenever I wait for the end of the day to journal, it's almost like harder to journal because maybe I won't remember exactly. Maybe I took like six trades that day. And maybe I just don't, the first one was as fresh as the last three. Right. So I was yeah. curious if they're doing it every, after every trade or at the end, but it sounds like you do at the end. Yeah, I do it at the end. It's, it's easier for me to do it at the end. Uh, yeah. I mean, I take a screenshot and then I can just study the screenshot and then uh, it's easier yeah. for me to do it at the end. Everyone has their system at the end. True, true. And, and, and I'm curious because I know people are going to be, hearing you talk about tape and, and they're going to be like, why aren't you asking me questions about that? So I'd love to know, like, could you just explain in, in just a quick, easy way for someone who's listening to this? Now, I know, and everyone who's watching, you need to know like tape is not something you're just going to hear and be like, okay, I got it. But could you All just right. kind of briefly explain what you may want to look for or how you can also learn tape reading by yourself at home? Uh, tape reading by yourself. So something that I, I was uh, taught or I helped implement at my workplace is recording your screen. And thank you to uh, Mike Bella at SMB Capital watching their videos has taught me a lot about how to improve myself. So and I know you you interviewed Mike, too. And that was a, that was a great interview and Scott or Spencer Spencer, I believe. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, great interviews. But yeah. So coming back to the question over there. Um, yeah, record your record your video, and I would say for the for the most part, record your entries, your exits, and even those trades where you think you would have entered, uh, because all of those inflection points on the tape will tell you what's going on. That's one of the fastest ways for you to uh, shorten your learning curve, because the market's only open, realistically open, from nine thirty to four o'clock, mm -hmm. and you're not watching all the stocks. Maybe you're diverted to your baby Apple when all the fun and game is on Bed Bath and Beyond, right? Yeah. So. Uh, you want to you want to maybe record Bed Bath and Beyond on another screen and trade your Apple, but then when you get time, watch Bed Bath and Beyond and exactly see how it trades at the levels that it's breaking. For example, high day I think what 23, 24, it's breaking 24. What's going on? It's printing green, 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 green. It goes to 24. There's some size on 24 on the ask now that's blocking the stock from going too far higher. Is that size getting taken off? If that size getting taken off, is it actually being shown up on the time of sales mm. is if it's not showing up on the time of sales but the size is going taken off that means that's the, either someone's pulling their order because they don't want that size that means the stock has a higher chance to go up and then you have all these other factors to go in you see bids stacking up you see asks getting taken out 
You might even have your setup to where you can see higher than ask punches. So all of these things factored in at the end of the day, the more you record, the more you watch the tape, it's, it's uh, what do you say? Get those reps in, you know, I'm not mm-hmm. really uh, a gym guy, but I plan on going to the, you know, start in the gym soon. But it's at the end of the day, you know what it is about getting those reps in. You want to get your muscles worked and the only way to do it is actually do it. Thankfully, we have this beautiful thing called paper trading. People don't put that to effect a lot. You can learn how to read a tape without being in a trade. Just have a paper account and and learn how to trade through there. Obviously, your emotions are not going to be connected. Uh, Level two reading is is not as complicated as some of these people make it look, but it's it's just putting that time towards it that makes it complicated. Gotcha. I appreciate you saying that. And I'm curious on another thing, and that is, was there anything besides patience? Because I know you mentioned that earlier that you're currently working on. But was there anything that was kind of like holding you back to at least get profitable at the beginning? Or was it pretty easy for you? Like, could you explain that if there was like something you remember? Holding me back from being profitable. I mean, like I was saying earlier, I was just lucky. Anything I, I touched was just uh was just printing because of the nature of the market at that point. Right. Uh, obviously I did get into slumps a little bit and then I would have another good streak of uh, trading. What would cause those slumps? Yeah. What would cause those slumps is uh, honestly overconfidence. Mm, like okay. I would go on a, a, on a, on a absolute hot streak and overconfidence would kick in like, Oh, I know exactly what I'm doing. Whereas I, I actually just got lucky and I'm barely a year into my career. I, I put it as university, right? I'm a second year university student. Well, I think I'm, I'm like a, a PhD at my job who knows what he's doing at all the time. Right. Right. Like, so you got to understand where reality is, come back to reality a little bit. And then when I do come back to reality, that's when I start trading way better. And my, my emotions are calm and my, I'm way more, um, just smoother in my trading in general, but it's when I get confident. It's, it's when I start going off the rails. Mm, I love that you said that because that's, it's like a lot of people, they want to have those winning days. And, but there's also the challenge of being winning every single day, right? Cause then yeah. you start to get overconfident and then you can slip and it happens to everyone. I mean, I'm very guilty of that. So I definitely understand that. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious also on when it comes to hitting a big loss, which I'm sure you've hit at some point in your career, big is relative, right? So big for you at that time, how do you come back from that? Like, were you like, do you have any advice or, or is that something that you kind of learn? Cause you're with the team. Do they kind of talk to you and say, okay, this is what you should do. How, how do you come back from like a big hit? Yeah. For, for the first part, I got to give shout outs to my team. You know, all my, all my brothers in the office always get, got my back anytime though, those type of things happen. And uh, they, they really help you click right into the back end of the mindset. Okay. Mm. So what is hurting you? What, what is, where's the damage coming from? Let's clip these losses. And then they start holding you accountable for it. So got to give shout outs to them. And uh, for, for coming out of that, coming out of that damage, you know, honestly, I would say your psychology needs to be the main thing. I went through a part where uh, I traded bad and my psychology would be bad. I would treat myself bad. I would, uh, I would go into bad habits in general and it would just spiral down into my trading the next day and then the next week and the next month. And that would just go all the way down. So uh, I had to go, okay, listen, stop it, get back up, fix my mind, fix my mentality. Uh, and, and that's where everything begins. So if anyone is on a slump yep. uh, and I understand everyone will be on a slump, you you cannot be a trader without going into a slump once and get out. That's what Neil says in that you interviewed Neil before. So you cannot be a trader before getting into a slump at least once and actually working your way out of it. So if anyone's in there, you're not alone. And the way to get out of it is to fix your psychology, bank those wins. Even if it's $1 a day, bank them win slowly, bank them slowly, slowly, find those setups that are scalable for yourself, Tra- track those setups so you know exactly which ones are scalable, which ones are not, and what are hurting you. And then just bank those wins slowly. You can inch your way back to wherever you were and you can get back to where you want to be. Amen, brother. I appreciate you saying yeah. that. And and I'm also, you mentioned something earlier and I want to bring it back. And, and you said paper trading. 
And you said, you know, that's a tool that some people, a lot of people just don't even use. You could use it for tape reading practice and, and actually take the trades. You could record it while you paper trade. Do you paper trade yourself or did you? And, and if you did, do you also, did you take it to the extent of only during the market or like maybe at night when the market's closed and kind of replay the day? I'm just very curious on how you used it. Yeah, for sure. At work, we we use paper trading all the time for uh, testing new strategies. You know, I don't want to take a new strategy that I'm working out and put it right on the market. Why would I do that when I can spend it on on uh, the the paper trading account for free? So anytime we're learning a new strategy or someone someone new comes on the floor, they're teaching us new stuff. Uh, so we're we're gonna try it on the TMS software, which is a training module simulator, I think, okay. or something along around that. At the end of the day, paper trading account for our, our uh, software uh, um, and, and uh, you you start off trading on the simulator first anyways once you're on the floor so everyone starts out with the paper account first you're probably on there for a month and then if, and then after a month they'll move you to the live account and you're allowed to lose fifty dollars a day and you got to make 22 grand in, in x amount of period so that that's where like these uh trainees as we call them have to they get put through the ringer they have to work their way out of it imagine having to lose only 50 bucks a day where, where you have to take minimum 10 shares and make yep. two grand it's like if you don't know how to manage your risk properly and time your entries properly you're you're getting blown out so let's stay on that for just a second because there's a lot of people who are brand new right they're listening right now they probably have been trading for a couple of months maybe even a year and they're trying to figure things out and they're like this guy right here prad he's talking about you know trading paper trading he's gone through a process that's more professional you know it's an actual prop firm could you give any advice or kind of share what you can share when it comes to the idea of okay there's a new trader let's start paper trading and then when you hit xyz i don't know what that was i don't know if there was any criteria then go to a real account risk 50 bucks like you said and if you hit xyz then go, you know what I'm saying? So could you, do you recall like a process that could maybe shed some light on a new trader who's trying to trade a 30,000 account that they saw, they, they saved up and they're risking 1% on every trade of that 30,000 and they're brand new. So like, could you explain like an easier way for just helping someone ease into it? Uh, so at the floor that we have right now, and some floors are different, but at the floor we have is, uh, you, you just come in, you do one month on paper trading, no matter what. You get used to the keyboards, you get used to the hotkeys and how the system works. So you understand how to at least, you know, get into a trade and get out of a trade for the most part. Right. Uh, so you spend one month on the paper trading and then they just put you live into the, the real market. So there's no uh, goal there the, other the than to get familiar. Funds. So get familiar with the paper trading okay because the, the the company puts you right into the right through the sharks they throw you into the into the big game and they're like okay you whatever you lose at for for uh a day as long as it's up to 50 bucks in a day we will take your losses and then uh, we'll, we'll train you throughout those processes so that's that's the good thing that the company does mm -hmm. for us but for as regards to like maybe given retro and not retro in, in perspective to a, a new trader with a thirty thousand account or whatever account you're saying uh, you know, I would say start off with the paper account with no doubt, learn some strategies, learn some strategies that are working for you. And each person's very different at the end of the day, right? Maybe you like scalping. Maybe you like to hold it for the move. Uh, each person's very different. I started off with the, uh, with the hold it for the move type of yeah. trader. I, I morphed into a scalping and now I'm morphing back into a hold it type of move with a little bit of a scalping in there so I can bank my wins. Mm. I'm, I'm trying to learn as many things I can I can learn at the same time, right? So uh, I would I would urge people to do the same. If you're a brand new trader, put the time in, learn the type of trader you are, learn who you are to begin with because that's where a lot of the setups are going to start pouring into. Then uh, read some books. You got the the playbook by the great Mike Bella. You also got one good trade and there's so many other books out there. You can just go nonstop, just Google good trading books. Jack uh, Schrager's Market Unknown mm -hmm. Wizards. There's so many of them that you can listen to for stories. Actually spend some time to learn. There's no reason for you to go put money in there, go get hurt and, and learn by getting hurt. Mm. Right. I always say uh, on the show that there's, uh, I think, two or three ways to learn really quickly. One is, 
you know, making mistakes and learning it by yourself. The second is, is watching other people's mistake and learning from there. And thankfully in this market, we have an expedited process. When you record your screens, you can watch it at night. You can watch it uh, afterwards on weekends and expedite your process when the market's not really moving. So these are three ways that you can learn in this, in this game that a lot of people are going to probably do that are, that are putting in work. And if you're not putting in that work, guess what? You're in the NBA league with, with Kobe Bryant, who's in the gym all day, all night. But if you're not putting that work, then you're not going to get those rings, right? 100%, man. And and before we start to wrap this up, if you could actually go back yourself, right? Go back to 2019, right when you applied and you're about to start your first day in, what would you tell yourself to help you get to where you are today, maybe a little sooner? Ooh, that's a great question. What would I tell myself in November 2019 to help me get here sooner? Have more patience. Hmm. Have way more patience. I didn't need to have to spend two years to learn for the backside, right? I could have learned to learn to wait for the the backside when the when the buyers sell, dry out and the sellers start piling in and all the other signs that are so obvious. I could have learned that way earlier. I probably saw the signs earlier, but it took me two years to really start applying it. So I think. Uh, Having more patience would have uh, would have got me here way quicker. Awesome, awesome. Well, look, Pratt, I really appreciate you sharing your story today, brother. And if anyone has any questions, where can they find you and learn more about you, brother? Uh, yeah, they can find me on YouTube from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock, Trader TV Live. I'm the host of uh, Midday Market Movers Mayhem. The name keeps changing all the time based to chat. Whatever the chat wants it, I'm, I'm the people's man over here. But don't tell Sean that. That's Sean's <laughs> name. Uh, but yeah, you can find us at Trader TV Live. And uh, I'm on uh, Twitter and Instagram also at Trader TV Pratt. Awesome. Well, look, Brad, I appreciate it again because I know a lot of people are going to get a lot of value out of this and they're probably replaying it or maybe sharing it with another trader already. So again, thanks so much. God bless and take care. Thank bro. you for having me, dude.